Lesson 8-1, page 394. It says, describe how the graph of g of x is related to the graph of f of x. I think first what we need to do is, get me a little white space here. Let's see here. In this lesson, we'll see the equation done two different ways. We'll see g of x equals a times 1 over x, uh, yeah, 1 over x minus h plus k. A is a vertical stretch or compression and if A is negative it would reflect over the x-axis. You have H, that's a horizontal translation, left or right, and then K is a vertical translation, up or down. The other way they might show it to you is g of x equals, and that would be 1 over, that's 1 over b, times x minus h plus k. And the only thing different here is the b and the B would be a horizontal stretch or compression. And if B is negative, that would reflect over the X hex or reflect over the Y axis. All right. So now describe how the graph of G of X is related to the graph of F of X. Well, here we have the four. We have the four here. And it is outside, so we're going to say that is k equals 4. And that would be a vertical translation up 4 units. All right. And I'm going to show you that in the TI-84. So here we're going to go here. <clears throat> to our TI-84, we'll press Y equals. And we got to put 1 over X there. So let's press math. And we're going to go to the left there. See where it says fraction, N over D, numerator over denominator. So we'll press 1. And we'll put 1 there. And we'll put X underneath. And then we just press graph. There it is.
simple. Now, let's do the plus four thing. So we'll go back to y equals. And then if you leave this highlighted, it'll, it'll show it. Uh, so we're going to go down here and we'll say math. And I'm going to go to the left there to fraction one. And I got one over x. And I'll do plus four. And you can see. And press graph, and notice how it moved it up four. Okay, <clears throat> it moved it up four. So that's pretty much how you use the TI eighty four for this lesson. We'll get rid of that. And let's try this one here. Now the difference here is the five. That's what's in, in addition to that, and that's in the A position. So A equals five. And that's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of five. All right. I'm going to start my Inspire. And then I'll graph it in the Inspire and you can see how that works. We got five open parentheses, control divide, one over x. And there it is. Uh, hmm. Let's, let's uh, compare it to the original. And then you can see how it stretched it. It pulled it away from... It pulled it away from the origin. Now we have 1 over x plus 3. Okay. A lot of people get this confused. Remember, x equals or x plus x minus h equals 0. Okay. Uh, so here, if you got x plus 3, we'll put that in there, x plus 3. Subtract x from both sides, and you got negative h equals 3. Divide both sides by negative 1, and you got h equals negative 3. So that's going to be a horizontal translation. Three units left. Number four, here we've got one over 0 0.1x. Uh, 0 0.1 is the same as one over 10. And we can go in here and let's go. Uh, 0 0.1 menu to uh, 2 and 1 over 10. Okay. Well, in the formula, 1 over B, 1 over B equals 1 over 10. So B equals 10. Well, let's take a look at it. That's supposed to be a horizontal stretch. Um, let's see. Let's go up to the first 
from there. I got a five in there. I'm going to take that out. And we'll put 0 0.1 there. And see how it pulled it away from the origin? So that is a horizontal. stretch by a factor of of 10. And let's try number five. All right, I'm going to put that on the thing, number five. I'm going to put that on the form, and you're going to tell me what it is. And let's see here. We'll let you do six as well. Five and six. Seven. Zero point, negative zero point one. Okay, so what is different is the negative zero point one. Okay, remember, zero point one is like one tenth, so that's going to be a vertical compression by a factor of one tenth and we have the negative that's going to be that's going to reflect over the x axis And I'm gonna I'm gonna show you all that. Let's see your tab. I just like showing you all that stuff. It's I think it's cool. So we got negative zero point one times and there it is. See how I pushed it in? Vertical compression. What about here? What about here? Well, we've got negative 3 equals 1 over B, and multiply both sides by B, and you've got uh, negative 3B equals 1, divide both sides by negative 3, and you got B equals negative 1 third. So this is going to be a vertical, excuse me, this is going to be a horizontal compression. By a factor of one third, and it is going to reflect over the y axis. All right, good deal. See, this stuff's not all that hard. Identify the transformation of the graph of f of x that produces a graph of the given function g of x. Then graph g of x on the same coordinate plane as the graph of f of x by applying the transformation to the asymptotes x equals 0 and y equals 0 and the reference points negative 1, negative 1, and 1, 1. Also state the domain and range using inequalities. Set notation and interval notation. Oh, wow, we're going to be busy. So let's take a look at this. What do we got? We have, let's see here. We have A, A equals 3. And that's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. We have X, e, or excuse me, we have H equals negative 1. Okay. Hmm. That is going to move it to the left one. And we have k equals negative 2. And that's going to move it down two units. All right. So, hmm. We have the point negative 1, negative 1. Let's see what we got here. Negative 1, negative 1. Remember the formula from way back then? B times x plus h. A times Y plus K. 
it still stands. So what do we got? Well, we don't have a B, so B is 1, and this time X is going to be negative 1. So we got negative 1. Plus H is negative 1. And then we have A, which is 3, times Y, which is negative 1, plus K, and that's going to be negative 2. So that, let's see here. Let's work this. That's negative 1 plus negative 1. That's negative 2. That's negative 3 plus negative 2. That's going to be negative 5. Negative 5. So we got negative 2, negative 5. That's going to be right there. Okay. That's going to be right there. Now let's do the one more. One, one, we're going to have one times one minus one, and then three times one minus two. One minus one minus one is zero. Three minus two is one. So we're going to have zero, one. 0, 1 is going to be right there. Now, we also got, we also got, uh, we're going to have an, as, an asymptote at negative 2. That's going to be, this will be right here. And we're putting this in here so that we know where to draw our line. Okay. So we're going to draw our line, it's going to look like And we got 0, 1, and that's going to be, okay. Let's take a look at it. Let's see what we got. Tab. Let's go up here to the first one. And we'll do, we're going to put that, that's going to be three. Got three. And then we got X plus one. And then we've got minus we press enter, and there it is. Uh, hmm, does that look like what we had? It does, doesn't it? And just for giggles, menu three, two. I'm going to put in that uh, uh, y equals negative two, so you can see that. See, there's your asymptote. All right. And you notice you also got another asymptote here. Uh, tab, we'll put x equals negative one instance. Okay, so you had that asymptote and you had this one here. All right, there you go. And you notice these asymptotes are directly related to these here. Okay? They are directly related to those right there. And matter of fact, the center of it happens to be negative one, negative two, which is right. right. The other one that we did, you notice H was zero and K was zero, and that's why it was zero, zero. Number 10, let's try number 10. Now this time we have B, and B is negative 0 0.5. So B equals negative 0 0.5. What's that going to do for you? It is going to compress it by a factor of 1 half and reflect it over the 
y-axis. Uh, we're going to have h, uh, that was supposed to be red, h equals 3, and we're going to have k equals 1. So let's find 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, and we're going to put it right there. And we'll draw our asymptotes. I'm a little off on that one. Okay. Well, let's go to our points. Negative 1, negative 1 is going to be, well, negative 0 0.5 times 1 plus 3. And we're going to have 1, that's going to be A, times negative 1. I should have put a negative 1. Uh, plus 1. So negative 0.5 times negative 1 is positive 1 half, plus 3 is, we'll say 3.5. And then that's going to be negative 1, negative 1, plus 1 is 0. So we have 3.5, 1, 2, 3 and a half, and 0 is going to be right there. Okay, let's do one more. We're going to have negative 0 0.5 times 1 plus 3. And we're going to have 1 times 1 plus 1. That's going to give us negative 0 0.5 plus 3. That's going to be 2.5. And 1 plus 1 is 2. So let's find 2.512 is going to be right there. And we're going to draw our line. It's going to be right there. And then we got another one. Uh, boy, I'm messing, I'm messing that up big time. Ah, yeah, they, there it goes. And there it is. All right, and there, there is our graph. And like I said, you can always go in here. You can always go in here and graph it. And we had control divide one over negative zero point five. X minus three, open parentheses, X minus three. Plus one. And there you go. And we can go in and change these uh, asymptotes so you can see those three and one. X is three. And Y is one. And then there you go. All right. Cool beans. Let's try another. We're having so much fun. Let's try another. All right. We're going to have A equals negative 0 0.5. That's going to reflect over the x-axis, and then it's going to be a vertical compression by a factor of 1 half. We have H equals 1, and we have K equals negative 2. So let's find, uh, let's find 1, 
negative two. That's gonna be right there. And let's draw that like that. And this like this. Oh. There we go. We got our we got our stuff. Hmm. And we got negative one, negative one. And I want you to tell me what those points are. And then we're going to have one, one. And I want you to tell me what those points are. All right, so you can find them. You're welcome. 12. I want you to find those points for me for 12 as well. And this time, I'm not going to tell you what A, B, H, and K are. You're going to find them. So I'm going to want to know what A equals, B equals, H equals, and K equals. All right. Whoa, this looks different. Rewrite the function in the form of g of x equals a times 1 over x plus k, or g of x equals 1 over, 1 over b times x minus h plus k. And graph it. Also state the domain and range using inequalities, set notation, and interval notation. Well, this looks different. All right. Well, how in the world are we going to do this one here? Remember that old division stuff? x minus 1. Yeah, we're going to do that. We have 3x minus 5. So let's see here. We're going to have to 3, 3 times. That's going to be 3x and minus 3. So these will cancel out. Negative 5 minus negative 3 is positive 2. <clears throat> So if we was to rewrite this, that would be g of x equals hmm, 3 times 1 over x minus 1, and that would be plus 2. Let's try that. So we're going to, on my document, ooh, on new document, no. Let's go to graphs. So we have 3x minus 5. 3x minus 5 over x minus 1. All right. Well, let's see, let's see how that translates to our new equation. 3 times 3, open parentheses, 1 over <clears throat> x minus 1, is that right? And then plus 2. This always makes me nervous. Oh, it did not. What happened here? 3x minus 5, x minus 3x minus 5, x minus 1. 3x minus 5 over x minus 1. What happened here? And it's 3 times x minus 1 over x minus 1. And then 3. Hmm. All right, so I got negative 5 minus, that should be negative 2. All right, so this should be negative 2, and that should be plus 3. Got a little, little messed up there. So now let's go and graph it. Tab. And we're going to put negative 3 here, 
negative, it should be negative two. Negative two, and then plus three. There we go. So it did fit. That's why you should always check on the calculator, right? All right. Uh, let's look at it. It says we want to, well, what is the range in notation? Uh, what is the domain in range? Well, I'm looking here, and it's going to miss there. It's going to miss there. So, well, when, when x equals 1, so it's going to be, let's see, uh, set notation x such that x is not equal to 1, all right, that's the domain, and the range is going to be y such that y is not equal to negative 3, no, 3. Because 1 minus 1 is 0, and that makes that plus 3. Looky here. Let's go up here. Where is the only places it doesn't touch? Menu, 3, 2, and then we've got x equals 1. It doesn't touch there. Menu, uh, let's see, tab, and then y equals three and it doesn't cover there so that's the only two places that it does not touch that's the only places it does not touch so y does not equal three and x does not equal one uh, that set notation inequality would be uh, uh, x is less than one and x is greater than 1. Range, uh, y is less than 3, and y is greater than 3. And interval notation, uh, you know, we're not going to worry about that. Inequality and set notation. Let's see if we can try one more since I made a little boo-boo on that one. Let's see if we can fix this one here. So we're going to have uh, 0 0.5x plus 2. And we've got x plus 5. So let's see. To get that, I'm going to have to multiply that by 2. 2 times 0 0.5 would be just x. And 2, that's going to be plus 4. Now I'm going to subtract that. These will cancel out. And 5 minus 4 is 1. Okay. So we're going to have 1 times, this is g of x, 1 times, and we're going to have 1 over now, in here, we've got 0 0.5, 0 0.5x plus 2. Now, if I multiply that by 2, if I multiply that by 2, I get x, right? So, I'm going to multiply this by 2. And that's going to give me 2 times, and that's going to be x plus 4. All right? So we got 2 times x plus 4, and then we got plus 2. Okay. Let's see. 2 times 0 0.5. That's 1. Okay. So let's try tab, uh, new document. Let's go to graphs. Uh, control, divide. We'll put in the original. We got x plus 5, x 
plus 5 over 0 0.5 x plus 2. Is that it? All right, press enter. Okay. Notice how it's way over here. Okay. So let's do that. Now let's type this in. Add. We got one times uh, control divide. And we have one over one over two open parentheses x plus four uh, and then we got to have what was it plus two and there it goes now that's a little bit different why is that different the red is the one that we did that's this one here Hmm. I multiply by two. Mm, I did it again. That should be one half times x plus one. All right, zero point five times x plus one. So tap, oh, let's go up here, and we're going to take all of this out. Zero point five times, and then that's going to be x. Now it should be x plus four, right? It should be. Yeah, here it is. All right. So that's x plus 4. All right. Yeah, because you got to take that out. All right. 0 0.5x plus 2. And you got to take that out. So that would give you 0 0.5 times x plus 4. Would equal that there we go you got to reverse that process so there we go we got it what about uh well the domain in the range if you'll notice x cannot equal uh, the domain will be x such that x cannot equal negative four it's the only place that don't touch uh now, let's see here. Menu, three, two, x equals negative four. And notice there it goes. And then y equals two. Tab. Tab. Y equals two. And there we go. We good? All right. So be careful. Those, th those two things that I did on both of those is very, very common. Happens all the time. Range. Check your work in your calculator. Folks, have a good day, and I hope to see you soon.